The dynamite theory is what Dr. Garland has, which I would encourage you, if you want to share this with your doctor, or if you're a doctor and you want more information about this, he actually has a presentation on our website, which I would be happy to share with you about what this means. Basically, we have in our bodies, most cancers are cancers of the epithelial cells, the linings of the, uh, the ducts. And those cells are held together by a substance called E. cadherin. It's a glue. And if you don't have enough vitamin D or calcium or both, that glue just kind of comes apart and the cells go their own way. And when they go their own way, they do their own thing. They grow, they expand, they go all different directions and ultimately they become what we call cancers. So he actually said that natural selection is the engine of growth of cancer. You put a child, how many of you are mothers, fathers, whatever? How many of you have ever been children? <laughs> come on, let's see. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you put a child out in the middle of a field, and he's going to do his own thing, he or she, right? Okay? And then after you watch for a little while, you're going to say, my gosh, that's an unruly child, right? You just take a cell and you do exactly the same thing and exactly the same thing happens. In order to make the cells do their own thing, you just have to kind of pull them together very gently with this net and it works. What do we do to prevent it? I've already told you. Know the answer now? Get the serum levels to 100 to 150. What's the message? Serum level to what level? Okay, I'm gonna take away this sign now. Okay, what was the level? You can go home now. Okay, what we found after two years of working in the field was that we still needed something to give to the public, to the practitioners, whatever, in the form of a sort of study. Not a clinical trial, but what is called a population project, or a population trial, as it were, where we got lots of the public involved in a very large study to do what we say is necessary and to make it happen. So we started what's called a de-action project. Uh, if you haven't figured out yet, Carol is an action person. What we did with all these scientists that we had met was we invited them to create a call to action. And you have a copy of that in your folder if you picked it up. It's called the Scientist Call to Action. And every single scientist on that panel, on that left column, we have paid a visit to. We know those people. They know us. And they fully endorse the idea, again, on that paper, it's very clearly written, that the serum level needs to be between 100 and 150 nanomoles per liter. What we put together, though, as a result of that, is a mechanism for everybody to test themselves. I have lots of audiences that say, my doctor won't test me, what do I do, All right? And for those circumstances, or if it's not covered by your insurance, you can work through the de-action project. And we have created some very profound results. And our study, our very first study, has just been published this in February by Dr. Garland and Dr. Haney. And I want to show you about what this says and what it means to you, whether you're a medical person or a not medical person. Across the bottom there, it says 0, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. That's intake per day. And right now, we are indeed focusing on supplements. Up on the right, the right vertical line there, that's nanomoles per liter, and you can see where the 50 line is and that 100 black line there, that's the lowest you ought to be, all right? And it goes up from there. If you pick any line, any vertical line at all, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, please look at the spread on that vertical line. If you pick, for example, 6,000, the lowest point there is about 50 nanomoles per liter. The highest point on the 6,000 line is about mm, 325. Every single one of those lines varies by about a factor of three. So when somebody says, how much should I take? I haven't a clue, all right? Can you see why I don't have a clue? Because I don't know where your body is gonna fit on that line. I don't know without testing. And to test, you have to test one time to find out where you are. Then you have to try some kind of supplement to see what it does with you, whether you're one of those people that rises up really fast or one of those people that rises up kind of slowly, and then you adjust accordingly. 
That was in spades, what that showed in that red line there is just the average of all of those and how that goes up. And one of the things that's interesting there is it may sort of look like it goes up in a straight line, but it doesn't, it flattens out. And the fact that it flattens out means that people are taking eight, 10, and we had people in the study taking 50,000 international units a day. And the fact that it flattens out means that you can take a whole lot more and you're not worried about any toxic effects of it, okay? It doesn't happen that way. And you'll hear more about that from Dr. Hayden and probably Dr. Schaffenberg as well. I wanna show you this chart, which also is meant to be kind of like a take home, what do I do chart. From that particular thing there, what we put together was, if I'm starting at 15 animals per liter, and I want to get to 125, based on that data, what would I be taking? Well, you could start with about 4,000 international units a day and see if it gets you there. It's a start with, and that's to that average line. It's not to the top line, but it's a starting level. What I want you to do in your minds, though, is to contrast that with the idea that you should be taking 600 IU a day. Hello? 600? It's not gonna get you there, right? It's not gonna get you there. So this is data from our study. We had 3,600 people plus in that study so far, but this kind of table is one that we have had a lot of physicians want to post on the wall to do something with is, what's my starting? Where can I try, given a patient at a particular level? Okay? The next step that I wanted to talk about a little bit is what can you do? No matter what you are, whether you are a physician person, a lay person, a smart person, you're all smart people, you wouldn't be here. Uh, I'm encouraging you all to take all kinds of action to support the scientist's call to action. And I want to tell you some of the things that we already have in place that you're welcome to join. Um, as individuals, I mentioned that we have people in our project. We have more than 8,000 people enrolled in the project right now. They come from the US, Canada, and all of those places. It's open all over the world. Uh, it does cost money because our project itself is funded entirely by the individual sponsors. We are not funded by NIH. We are not funded by other proprietary institutions. We're funded by the people and the institutions that want to do something about this. Associations and organizations. Just two weeks ago, the Ontario Society of Physicians for Complementary Medicine, the section of complementary and integrative medicine of the Ontario Medical Association informed me that they fully endorsed the scientist's call to action and would be consequently educating all their physicians that are members to pay attention to this and do something about it. We are extremely excited about this, and you should be too. I mean, to me, this is partly the beginning in Canada. Locally, or quite locally in Calgary, yesterday we met with the head of the Direct MS organization, a multiple sclerosis organization that says, count us in. We are gonna pay attention to this with our members very directly to do that. We already have a whole bunch of clinics and medical groups, and I spoke briefly to a dentist back here today who have joined this call to action, and many of them provide education to their, their uh, personnel and or their patients, and many of them also offer the, the action product, sign up the testing right there in their clinics. But it varies. Courtyard Chiropractic, that second one there, is also a Canadian thing over in, in Toronto area. Home First Health Services is in Illinois. Mattapan is in Boston. Reading is in Pennsylvania. Roswell Park is in New York. Scardis is in New Mexico. And the list goes on. These are the clinics that are saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's do it. We have a lot of pharmacies, and I know the pharmacy situation in the US is different than in Canada, but we have all of these pharmacies, we have many, uh, where they actually have the test kits right there in the pharmacy ready to sell and to provide to people that want to do something about vitamin D. We also are growing now with a group of community projects. Um, I'm very delighted to say that in Northwest Arkansas, we're starting a breast cancer prevention project project sponsored by Biotech Pharmacol, which is a, indeed a supplement manufacturer. We have a multiple sclerosis group in Vermont getting a community project started. We have the state of Alaska. Are you ready for that? The state? 
A month or two ago, one of their state representatives called me up and said, Carol, I've seen some of these videos. We want to do something in this state to get the state into a preventive model of health care. And I went, what? <laughs> I'm ready for this, I think. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Haney and I flew up there and talked with them, and they have now actually formally blessed in their legislative action a resolution calling for prevention using vitamin D. And there's more coming every day. So it's on the roll, folks, and we invite each and every one of you to join and to help us spread the word. I love this quote. Reality must take precedence, for nature cannot be fooled. Vitamin D is nature. You can't fool the body any longer. We got to do something about it. I thank you all. What's the message? All right, you got it. My special thanks to Dr. Garland, Dr. Haney, Dr. Baggerly, our 8,000 sponsors, and all the activists. And now, if some of you have a few questions, I will take them, and then I'm going to turn the podium over to Dr. Sorensen. Yes, ma'am. She was asking a question about calcium, and do I believe it's something people ought to take? And she's been reading a lot saying calcium is not good for you. Uh, I personal, I'm sorry? Supplements, yes. Uh, at this point in time, the data that I know about is that yes, you need to take some calcium supplement unless you fully get it from your diet, and most people don't. But it, again, from all sources, the calcium need for an adult woman, for example, is about 12 to 1500 milligrams a day. If you're getting it from milk, from cheese, from whatever, fine, don't take any more. The, da the dangers signs that you might have seen, I don't know what you've seen, but some of the danger signs that you have seen, specifically there was one just published within the last two or three weeks out of the Women's Health Initiative that said taking calcium was bad for the arteries. arteries. Dr. Garland spent 15 years on that study. He knows that study. And if you check on our website, you will see a rebuttal from Dr. Garland saying that that study that that person published was a pile of whatever. Okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Did our study control for smoking of all kinds? Our study that we are doing is uh, not, a, not per se an intervention study, and we don't have a control group like that, but we are tracking smoking, and people fill out a health questionnaire each six months with their vitamin D intake, so we certainly are tracking to see what happens with smoking. So in that sense, controlling, but tracking, I think, is a more appropriate term for our study. Our intervention that we are doing, quite honestly, is education. We're telling people what to do, and then we're waiting to see what they do and how well they do as a result of it. Yes. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, 1,000 international units by unit of weight is 25 micrograms. That much I will tell you. Uh, how it ties to the serum level, that was that chart I showed you where those vertical bars were so extreme. The higher the intake, or the higher the IUs, there certainly is a probability that the serum level is going to go up, but we can't quite tell how much. Uh, there are a lot of activities that you can do about it, um, and they will take, actually, Dr. Swaffenberger, are you going to talk a little bit about that issue? Great. He's from Canada, and I'm going to let him talk about that. But it doesn't matter where you are in one sense, all over the world, we are giving talks, we are giving presentations to educate you from the science perspective what needs to be done because it's really a bottoms up effort. You're going to have to bind together to inform your governmental officials, here's what you need to do to pay attention to my health. 